Welcome to Hit They Them. I love Agent 47 as he makes me feel better about my receding hairline. Today we'll be eliminating two targets, Sergi and Wen. This mission will be the hardest I've ever attempted because if we fail, they don't let you play it again for 12 real life hours. This means I'm going to have to avoid going full no Russian. Our first target, Sergi, is an art expert. He is currently a VIP guest at a Paris fashion show. I'm taking in with me a silenced pistol, a lockpick, and a briefcase with an RS-15 assault rifle in it for emergencies only. I walk in and the guy running this fashion show has a spotlight on him. As a narcissistic YouTuber, I'm immediately jealous at the attention he gets and I proceed to storm up the stairs and join him. The guards tell me not to be a jealous Jenny. I watch the fashion show for a moment. I've surprisingly been in a fashion show before. I borrowed a suit off my stylish European mate and I went to the horse races. I got asked if I wanted to be in the best dressed competition and I thought why the hell not. I proceeded to drink heavily for the next 4 hours and when the show started I got up on the catwalk and began air humping in the direction of the 3 judges. I believe I pointed at a female judge while yee hawing like a cowboy. I was escorted off the stage but you'll be happy to know that I didn't stop thrusting the entire time. I see two women who are dressed exactly the same, how embarrassing. I accidentally whip out my pistol which is pretty unprofessional. They're shocked but they don't snitch which I respect. I attempt to enter the back door but they say I need an invitation. I begin the hunt for an invite and overhear two women gossiping. No one likes the little gossip and so I follow her into the bathroom and we have this moment where we look into each other's eyes, it's kind of beautiful. I then kill her. She had an invitation in her pocket which is perfect. Now we just have to hope that none of these hundreds of people need to use the bathroom over the next hour or so. On my way to the back door I see a woman having a photograph taken. I see the opportunity for a tasteful Christian prank and I photobomb the big girl. I'm probably not the smartest play getting photographed the night I'm planning to kill someone but we have fun at work. I show the guards my invitation and make my way inside. I continue following the guides but then I reach a checkpoint where they're frisking guests. And this won't be good as I've got more guns on me than a minority at a routine traffic stop. I find a bathroom and ditch my weapons inside. Seriously, one person with IBS and this entire operation is a bust. I'd attend more fashion shows if I knew I'd get felt up by big strong men, I mean I love checking out designers fall collections. I head into the main room and there are people sitting around bidding at a silent auction. This is the kind of auction where you buy illegal things like human organs and Mexicans. I take a seat and look around while everyone sits socially awkwardly staring at their iPads not saying a word. What is this, a relationship? I have a look around the guest section and find a screwdriver which I steal. Tools were surprisingly expensive. I figure I'll treat myself to some fresh air but as I open the doors to the terrace a handsome security guard gets mad at me and asks me to leave. He escorts me all the way down to the bottom level. I haven't been this humiliated since I got kicked out of school. In their defense it was pretty weird that a dude in his 20s was walking around spreading the good word of his YouTube channel but I've got to promote my content somehow. Anyway this was just an elaborate plan to get felt up by this little cutie twice. I head back upstairs and look for my target but then I see a waiter looking lonely and breedable. I take a calculated risk and stab the man with my screwdriver. I hide the body incredibly poorly, take his clothes and now I have access to more of the mansion. I go and wipe some of the tables because it's important to get deep into your cover. Agent 47 almost throws the entire mission as he is not getting sufficient coverage with that cloth. I head inside a room and it turns out to be the attic. Inside the attic I find a vampire costume. I put it on and now we have an entirely new problem. How are we meant to assassinate Sergi with bitches throwing themselves at me? I also find a fire axe. This disguise seems to offer no tactical advantage whatsoever. The attic is crawling with guards and I grab one and choke him out. I steal his clothes and slip back into the party like I was Uncle Gary at a high school sleepover. I open a door which happens to be the room with the dead waiter inside. A woman sees the corpse and she shrieks loudly alerting the guards. Like a rapper who raps about killing people, I just snitched on myself. The mansion enters a state of panic as someone's been murdered. I don't see why they're so pressed, it was just the help. If a young woman gets murdered that's sad but if a white male gets murdered that's just reparations. I kill one of the film crew and take his clothes to keep the pursuing guards off my tail. If anyone comes in here hopefully they just assume he undressed himself, slipped over and slit his own throat with a fire axe. I head outside and spot Sergi walking with his security detail. I get nice and close and begin pirouetting while simultaneously slapping the big girl with my lanyard. Cop that. I follow Sergi looking for a moment to strike. We make our way down the grand staircase and through to the makeup studios. I'll never understand fashion and I've made my peace with that. I remember the moment that I had that realization like it was yesterday. It was when Lady Gaga wore a dress entirely made up of meat. Like what do you even get when you cross lamb DNA with human DNA? You get kicked out of the petting zoo. Sergi and his incompetent security guard enter a secluded staircase and I pick my moment to strike. There's nothing more evil than an art enthusiast dying from a screwdriver to the face. 
Well, I mean, the Holocaust was worse. Hiroshima. World War II in general wasn't a great time for the human race, but that's one target down. I escape the mansion and earn a new personal best rating of one star. Speaking of ratings, you should like the video so I can live in your recommended section rent free. Our next target is Wen, a food connoisseur staying at a hotel in Bangkok. Ah, Thailand, a place where boys become men, men become women, and women become busty. I decide to wear a tasteful white singlet. I'm bringing in with me a pistol, some emetic poison, and three blueberry muffins. I go to check into my room, and the clerk bows at me all judgmentally. Believe it or not, not all white men are here to cheat on their wives with ladyboys. Some of us are also here to kill people. I get shown to my room, and this is clearly a classy establishment. They even have his and her face masks on either side of the bed, which reminds Agent 47 that he's a genetically engineered human who'll inevitably die alone. I proceed to go into the bathroom, and the water begins overflowing from the sink. Water is a beautiful thing. Genius. An exceptional intellectual who stays sufficiently hydrated at all times. My mate Stealth Omato and I got together with the goal of changing the hydration game forever. We immediately invested seven and a half trillion dollars into research and development. We studied the water. We tested the water. We became the water. And too long have I stood by and stayed silent, all the while the perfect drinking device doesn't exist. The beautiful concept of hydration is not being nurtured, it's being blasphemed. The humans are 60% water for God's sake, it's time we look in the mirror and embrace who we all really are. After hours of vigorous and quite frankly inhumane experiments, we came up with a solution that would put water on the pedestal it deserves. I'd like to introduce the Modest Pelican water bottle, the perfect way to hydrate. Releasing next video. I decide I'll search the other hotel rooms for my target when. I follow this guy into his suite. He's wearing a blazer with beige shorts, the international uniform for an exceptionally rich Nepo baby whose peak sexual experience was playing Soggy Sayo with his frat boy buddies when he was 22. I proceed to turn the lad into Bear Grylls as he's forced to drink his own urine. Not sure why I killed him, but just to add insult to injury, I also deflate his crocodile pool floaty. I discover zero tactical intelligence from his room. There are two guards patrolling the halls, and I pull out my blueberry muffins and begin throwing them on the floor. Nobody likes Lady Litterbug, but these two soldiers seem unfazed. The Thai people are extremely patient. When I was at university, I took this class called Introduction to Tourism, and we had to do a group project on Thailand. We all met up the morning of the presentation and were proofreading each other's work. I'm reading this girl's speech, and she was calling the Thai people Taiwanese. I was like, yo shorty, that's an entirely different country, and she was like, no it's not. The group sat there in silence for a moment, and after a brief debate, she decided to stick to her guns. You've gotta respect that, I guess. She proceeds to walk out in front of the entire class, and speak about Taiwan and Thailand like they were the same place. Our professor called her out on it pretty quickly, and this chick begins crying in front of the whole class. Years later, I see on Instagram that she's doing OnlyFans, making more money than the very professor who struck her down. It just goes to show, casual racial insensitivity has no correlation to projected career earnings. I decide to search the restaurants, and this is where I find my target when. It appears he's doing a food tasting, and he's rather loudly mouthing off about how bad it all is. I think you're only allowed to be a food critic if you were severely bullied as a child. He's sitting in quite a protected area, so I head down to the kitchen to see if I can cook up a plan. I realize I'll need a disguise, and so I head to the bathroom, which is always a safe shout when playing Hitman. A staff member heads inside, I choke him out, break his neck for no real reason, and hide the body in one of the cubicles. Again, we're kind of just banking on no one needing to take a leak. I go and visit Wen to see if I can speak with him, but he just tells me the food's shit and to leave. Wow, I think there's a constructive way of conveying the same message that doesn't hurt my feelings. We head down to the kitchen, where he continues being malicious, but most importantly, he tries the cake. This is the opportunity we've been waiting for. I poison the cake with my emetic vial, and now we just have to play the waiting game. While I wait, I have a look around the hotel. They've got a brown lounge. What is this, the 1950s? Wen heads back to the kitchen, but the cheeky rascal doesn't eat the cake this time. He instead just looks at the other dishes, while still being a real nasty Nicholas. He leaves the kitchen and goes back to his safe security thick table, meaning I have a real problem on my hands. If I linger around any longer, people are going to become more suspicious and I'll fail the mission. Sometimes in Hitman, you just have to do it the old fashioned way. Back in the day, I took the bus to school and this girl used to get bullied by this fat kid named Bryce. He'd call her names, take her seat and steal her stuff. I was a few years older than them, so it wasn't really my place, but one day she came to school with this cake she'd baked for her friend's birthday. He smashed it in front of her. It was so brutal, she was crying and I felt so bad for her. I get off the bus and I just grab this little rat by his collar and slam him up against the bus stop. I lay two moderately hard punches into his gut and says if he ever messes with the girl again, I'll lay him out. 
It was like a scene from The Godfather, except way less cool because of the enormous age difference. The vice principal sees the whole thing, which from his perspective was just a 17 year old beating up a 13 year old. He calls my parents and it sounded really bad without context. Like I was just bashing younger kids, which was objectively true I guess, but yeah. The girl who was bullied comes up to me the next day and I wasn't expecting flowers, but a formal thank you card would have gone a long way. No, she says all maturely, violence is never the answer, Jeff. Imagine having a f***ing child give you life lessons. Anyway, the moral of the story is, sometimes you've got to beat up a few 13 year olds to grow as a person. When eliminated, that's both targets down and that's a mission complete. One of my mates, Boy Scout Gatsby, is a rapper and I was in his new video clip. I was thinking it would be fun if loads of us went over there and left a comment involving water. Like for example, damn that rap was wetter than water. This way we can ensure his entire comment section will be sufficiently hydrated. I'll link the video in the description. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching you dodgy malakas. I love you.